were in Sacramento yesterday and likely heading to the Bay Area today. They are outfitted with all the meteorological tools needed to get up to the minute weather information. General Motors is back on top as the nation's top auto seller. The company reported that it sold 2.27 million vehicles in the U.S. in 2022. GM's 2.5 percent rise in sales last year was largely driven by purchases of gas-powered trucks and SUVs. The Detroit automaker reclaimed the crown from rival Toyota, which reported 2.1 million vehicle sales last year. All right, some bad news for Amazon. There are more job losses ahead for the tech industry. Amazon says it will cut more than 18,000 jobs this year. That is a big increase over last year's initial announcement that around only 10,000 employees would be laid off. This comes as cloud computing software company Salesforce says it will cut over 7,000 from its workforce. Salesforce will also be closing some offices. That's according to a regulatory filing. Scientists are finding success turning brain cancer cells into a working vaccine. Doctors at Brigham and Women's Hospital say they took glioblastoma cells in mice and then used gene engineering to turn them into a vaccine that both eliminates tumors and provides long-term immunity. The hope is to develop this technology to make a cancer-killing vaccine that's effective in humans as well. All right, this morning, moving right along. Time now, 5.55. Ahead on KCAL News Mornings at 6 and streaming on CBS News Los Angeles, we have continuing live coverage of this powerful storm slamming the Southland. And there's also particular concern in some burn areas. Stay with us. We've got more news in the morning after the break. Get the CBS Los Angeles app on any device. Local news, sports, weather, video on demand, and CBS News Los Angeles. All in just one tap. Download now.
Los Angeles. Well, that is a big story this morning. That massive storm that is bearing down on the Southland, bringing heavy rain, strong winds, and fears of flooding. Yeah, we have team coverage all morning long. Our reporters are out in the field chasing that rain and here in the studio. Our assignment manager, Mark Liu, is looking at the latest breaking weather news. Kalina Estrinos is tracking road conditions, but we begin with Olga Espina with your next weather forecast. Olga. Hi, good morning, ladies. And yes, we are tracking a lot of rain across Southern California on this Thursday, and uh, we're going to continue to see it really for several more hours. So as we take a look, you can see a lot of that rain out through the San Gabriel Valley, some of those foothills and mountains getting still some of that rain uh, where you see those yellows that indicates those uh, stronger cells snow up in the mountains. So yes, uh, it is going to be nice out there at the resorts as far as eastern IE not looking too bad yet, uh, but you are going to be getting in on a lot more of that rain as we continue through the morning and even into the afternoon. So I'll take you through that satellite radar tracker. You can see that by 7 a.m. when it is going to be really busy on the roads, we are seeing some pockets of really heavy rain out through uh, some of those uh, foothill areas and moving into the Inland Empire. So by 8 a.m., i.e., you will be experiencing a lot of that really heavy rain. And uh, even as we head into late morning, still seeing some of that moderate to heavy rainfall continuing through our region. So we'll talk about what to expect as we head into this afternoon and of course the weekend in just a few minutes. For now, a look at the roads uh, with Kalina. How are things looking out there? Olga, good morning. It has been so, so busy. Um, you might be driving or as you head out the door, you might have seen those signs that say stay off the roadway if you can. Please do that. We're just continuing to see all of these problem spots popping up this morning. We still have all lanes blocked off on the 10 eastbound. This is right at Kellogg. Um, this is all because of a traffic accident that we had here. They've issued a SIG alert, so there's no duration on it when it'll actually be lifted. So it is causing a delay there as you approach the 57. You can take the 57, though. Traffic is being diverted in that direction. Now, the 5 freeway northbound right at Paramount. This is our camera where you can see traffic uh, starting to build here. We have a crash adding to this delay. And, of course, I'll continue to track all the issues that we have out there this morning. And Ladies? there are so many of them. Kalina, thank mm -hmm. you. California now under a state of emergency as this latest storm sweeps the state. And we're already seeing some saturated roads in the San Fernando Valley. We have KCAL's Tina Patel live in Burbank, where some of these streets are now blocked off. Tina. Yeah, and we're actually in Van Nuys on Burbank Boulevard. And if I uh, kind of show behind me, the street now is closed. There are officers uh, up and down Burbank trying to keep people out of this area because of the flooding. Let me show you some video from uh, just maybe an hour ago that shows you what we were seeing when the road was still open. The problem is, is because it is so dark, cars were going through and not realizing that there were several inches of water on the roadway. Now, we didn't see anybody get stuck through those floods, but because there has been severe flooding in the supply Basin basin in the past. Uh, the CHP, the, the LAPD, they didn't want to take any chances. So Bal uh, Burbank Boulevard is now closed from Balboa Boulevard to the 405. This is not going to be open for the morning commute. Take a look at this video because earlier on the 101 freeway, we also saw some flooding and that had to lead to some lane closures. This was on the Van Nuys exit, the right two lanes. The water was just pulling up. Caltrans crews got there really quickly. They started working on the storm drain, getting that water to drain, and they were able to open those lanes of traffic. But both on surface streets and on the freeways, we're seeing, especially on those far lanes, we're seeing water start to pull up and it's a little bit hard to tell. So please be cautious as you're on the roads this morning. As we come back out here live, we are over the Sepulveda Dam and we can see a lot of water flowing through right now. It's still a little bit dark, so it's hard to tell just how much it is rising, but we are going to be keeping an eye in this area where we're already starting to see some flooding issues and we'll continue to update you throughout the morning about the conditions out here. I, uh, I know, ladies, that our, our camera is a little foggy because of all the weather, but uh, that's what we've been warning you about and that's what we'll continue to warn you about throughout the morning. Okay, Tina, thank you so much. And we are getting pounded by one of the most powerful rainstorms in years. And there is particular concern about a recent burn area. Cara Finstrom is live in Duarte with more on the situation there. Cara. Good morning. The rain's still coming down very hard. We're in an area that is under a yellow alert. About 25 homes here along Mill Canyon Road of concern because right above here are some hillsides that were badly damaged during the fish fire. And the concern is that some of that earth can come down. Now, they're not expecting major mud flows, but again, they are concerned that 
some of that earth could come down. So take a look at this. No parking, no trash cans allowed along this street at this point uh, as things progress. Now, giving you a look at uh, some of the road signs that we saw earlier this morning as we headed into work. This is along uh, the freeway, the 210 in the Pasadena area. They're asking folks to avoid travel through tonight because of how much water the storm is expected to drop. Caltrans workers say uh, that they have already cleared out storm drains, hoping to help keep the rainwater draining as it should. And back here live, giving you a look at some of the K rails that have also been installed along the street. Uh, all the way up the street reinstalled we should say they've had them here before because uh, there have been a number of fires and there have been some mud flows here in the past a really bad one back in 2016 so neighbors here say they will watch and wait and they are glad these precautions are being taken all right cara thank you and it is a tough day for driving all this rain making it so dangerous out there it really is and we could see some flooding in some areas so we want to get right to cake house rick montanez live along the 15 in the cajon pass Rick, how's it looking out there? Uh, very slick conditions here on the road, and of course, more rain continues to fall. Let's switch over and show you the road camera here where you can see a lot of rain coming down. And as we've been talking about this morning, the sun's not up yet, so still dark, still difficult to see where a lot of this water is collecting on the freeway and on the roads. And we've actually seen a couple of spin outs so far. We just passed a two car crash and then a single car crash where you can tell those cars both hit the side uh, walls here along the freeway because their headlights were smashed out. Uh, so dangerous, tricky conditions. We even talked with someone who said, I'm just going to pull over because the conditions are too dangerous. Listen. We're actually trying to drive to Utah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it's kind of like delaying us a lot. You think you'll make it today? No, <laughs> definitely not. I told my sister, I was like, we're not driving. I'm too scared. So we're back live looking at the 15. This is northbound lanes here and we're approaching the 138 off ramp. So to give you kind of an idea of where we are north of Claghorn Road, very slick conditions and be safe as traffic starts to fill in on the freeways. I'm Rick Montanez live in the Cajon Pass for KCAL News. Rick, thank you. And the heavy rains are causing multiple power outages. Let's check in with the desk. Our assignment manager, Mark Liu, joins us with the details. Mark. Uh, yeah, uh, Marcy and Ruta Bay, this storm is already here and it is causing a lot of problems. Our breaking news photographer has been very busy this morning. Take a look at this video. I want to show you some video from Burbank. This is near Oak Street and Beechwood. This tree uh, came down at about 11 p.m. right across the road. The entire road is now blocked. It's about 40 feet tall and now Burbank PD and City Works are working to get a crew out there to cut this thing up and remove it. Thankfully, no injuries in this one. But you know, falling trees in this storm are going to contribute to the other thing that we're tracking, and that's power outages. I've been in touch with both LADWP and Southern California Edison, the two major power providers in this area. Take a look at my computer screen here. This is Southern California Edison's power outage map. Now, as you can see, there are power outages all over Southern California right now. Uh, they say that about 2,100 customers are without power, and the restore times are quite variable. It could be as short as one hour. It could be long as multiple hours. LADWP is in better shape. They say just about 200 customers are without power, but they say anyone experiencing a power outage right now can expect that power outage to last as possibly as long as eight to 10 hours. That is a huge amount of time to be without your power. Now we're going to keep monitoring power outages and of course all of the breaking news, trees coming down and flooding here at the assignment desk. I'll bring you the very latest. Back to you. All right, so much going on today, Mark. Thank you. And there is other news to look at this morning as well. The search is on for the man who was caught on camera abusing a dog in Riverside County. And we do want to warn you, this video is tough to watch. It shows the man picking up the dog and throwing it over a razor wire fence. The man then walks away, abandoning the animal. This happened December 15th at an abandoned cell tower in the Winchester area. Thankfully, the dog is now okay and at the shelter in Harupa Valley. LA County has logged more than 2,100 new COVID cases, 1,200 hospitalizations, and 26 deaths. The data released yesterday comes after the County Health Department reported nearly 7,000 new COVID cases over the long holiday weekend. And a fundraiser for the family of fallen Riverside County Sheriff's Deputy Isaiah Cordero has surpassed its goal now. The Help a Hero fundraiser has topped $100,000. Deputy Cordero was shot and killed by a convicted felon during a traffic stop last week. His funeral will be held tomorrow morning. 
The LAPD, Sheriff's Department, and LA Fire joining the Red Cross for the Battle of the Badges blood donation campaign. It's a big effort to help keep the blood supply stocked, and they're asking you to respond to the call too. If you're interested in donating, head to kcalnews.com for details. And good morning, everyone. We are seeing a lot of rain across Southern California. Look at these totals so far, and we're still going to continue to see more rain throughout the day. Pasadena is at an inch, nearly two inches of rain so far for Porter Ranch. Same for Van Nuys, Long Beach just under an inch. Woodland Hills nearly three inches so far. Agoura Hills nearing two inches. And yes, we continue seeing a lot of rain across Southern California, continuing to push to the east, so I'll continue tracking this for you. Kalina Strino's tracking the roads for you in your next traffic report. Good morning. Olga, good morning, and we have an unfortunate update to one of our problem spots from earlier. We've learned the problem on the 10 freeway heading eastbound at Kylog is now a deadly crash, so the investigation will be here for a while. Uh, they're not giving us a timeline on when lanes may open up. We do have all lanes still blocked off here, and that backup just continuing to build as you head out of West Covina. If you have to take the 10, you're going to be diverted on the 57 um, if you even get there. So you might want to take the 210 or the 60 freeways to help you get around this. Again, this deadly crash. We also have another problem on the 91. This is right at Cherry. All lanes also blocked off here. They're trying to clear a crash at this moment. Ruta Bay Marcy. Oh, sad news, Kalina. Thank you. Time now 612 and history in the making at the Vatican. A live look now at packed St. Peter's Square for the funeral of Pope Benedict the 16th. Plus drama in D.C., a historic deadlock in Congress as efforts to vote for Kevin McCarthy, a Speaker of the House, keep falling flat. I'll tell you what's next today. And California's bomb cyclone, the big news today, it has caught the attention of high-profile weather chasers. They're flying into the heart of this storm. We'll have the details when we return.
Taking a live look at Los Angeles now. If you're just waking up, you're in for some rough weather. Welcome to KCAL News Mornings at 6 and streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. The time now 615 and this storm system pouring rain all over the state. It's actually so big. The military has sent out special planes from its Air Force Reserve Command Weather Squadron to study it. The large military planes were loaded with meteorological equipment and landed in Sacramento yesterday. They're expected to fly into the heart of the storm over the Bay Area today. And several communities along California's Pacific Coast are under evacuation orders as this major storm moves through. Already dealing with severe flooding, residents up and down the state are preparing for the worst. The heavy rains are particularly dangerous for areas with recent burn scars from wildfires, as well as areas near rivers and streams. Joining us now to tell us more about why this system continues to be so dangerous is Weather Channel meteorologist Jim Cantore. Welcome. Uh, Ruta Bay and Marcy, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me here this morning. The reason why this is so bad is because it's really never going to end. We just have a succession of storms that will just continue to roll in here with very high moisture content. And that's why we're seeing these rainfall totals pretty much be off the charts. We've got mudslides, obviously trees down with the wind and uh, power outages as a result of that. So here's kind of a look at these atmospheric rivers. All right, one storm coming in now. We get a little bit of a break. Here's the next one for Friday and Saturday and you notice how they kind of link up and are together and you mentioned the hurricane hunters that are out here to study the storms they're actually flying out into these rivers and they're looking at how wide they are and how deep they are with the moisture content to better give us an idea of how much rain actually comes down by the time we get into early next week this may be the biggest one of them all but this is after we've already had event after event after event so is it the straw that breaks the camel's back we'll see i mean look at the rain in northern california down into the central coast even into southern california we will deal with tremendous rainfall and uh, very very high elevation snows that'll uh, be in the feet category here are these ar rates three, four, and five. That's what we're going to deal with as we go through the next seven days. And if you look at the days that they last, oftentimes they overlap with a pattern like this. So instead of dealing with one to three days, we get a break. We have three days, then another three days, and then another two to three days on top of that. So it's really about a 10 day period of very heavy rain. Flood watches are all over the place because of saturated grounds. If you go back and look at the last month, we have had anywhere from 20 to 30 inches of rain. But look at that. We just today for the first time since May 2022 20, got out of the extreme of the worst level of drought. Obviously, it's still bad statewide long term, which means we have a long way to go. And this is just a testament to how bad this drought is. High wind warnings all over the place, especially on the coast. We're still going to gust to 50, 60 miles per hour with some of this, especially as we get into Friday with the next atmospheric river coming in. Busy pattern. California will be at the head of the weather headlines over the next several days. Guys, back to you. Jim Cantore for us. Thank you. And California, as he mentioned, the center of national attention right now. Yeah, absolutely. And Olga is giving us another look at our forecast as we see the, the radar behind you, just how bad this storm is right now. Yeah, really active out there right now and will continue to be so even as we head into the afternoon hours. So here is the good news. Yes, uh, Central Coast, Northern California still expecting more rain as we head into Friday, Saturday. We're going to catch a little bit of a break uh, before more rain heads our way. But right now we are dealing with a lot of wet weather out there. So we're going to zoom in and show you exactly where we're seeing some of those uh, stronger cells. Some moderate to heavy rain out through the San Gabriel's at the moment, even making its way into Orange County. And uh, we're going to continue to see that storm pushing to the east up in the mountains. We're seeing plenty of snow. Also, this is high elevation snow. So starting off at about seven, eight thousand feet, but lowering to about fifty five hundred six thousand and feet as we head into the afternoon and into tonight, even early Friday. So you can still see some spots looking at some dry weather that is not going to last long because we're going to continue to see that storm pushing out into those areas. So I'll take you through the morning, show you what to expect as we continue into the 7 a.m. hour and you are still seeing some pockets of heavy rain out through L.A., those higher elevations, some of those mountain areas and uh, into the Santa Clarita Valley. Also 9 a.m. Look at that Inland Empire. 
getting some heavy rain also. And even as we head into late morning, 1030, 11 a.m., a lot of L.A. and Ventura, look at that, looking at some clear conditions, at least for the moment. But Orange County into the Inland Empire seeing some very heavy rain before another wave of energy starts to move through as we head into the afternoon hours. And that's when the Santa Clarita Valley once again gets that heavy rain a little bit more scattered in nature by the afternoon hours. And look at what happens as we head into 6 p.m. This is going to be your commute time tonight. And uh, it's really over the Coachella Valley as far as that heavy rain. Parts of Santa Clarita as well. But things will continue to wind down as we head into late Thursday. And as we head into early Friday, here is your commute tomorrow looking a lot better. All right, we're going to take a look at your traffic now. The road. I know they've been a mess, Kalina. Yes, and we have another problem to tell you about this morning. The wet conditions causing flooding out on our roadways, and this is a new spot where we're seeing that. It's on the 710 heading northbound right at the 91, right at that connector road. Um, looks like three right lanes are flooded right now. The only lane that's not is that far left lane, and you can see traffic building in both directions right now on the 710 and also on the 91 heading away from the area and toward the 710. So give yourself extra time. You can take the 605 as an alternate route instead, and we still have this problem eastbound 91 right at Cherry. All lanes are blocked right now on the eastbound side. That's because they're trying to clear a crash. This deadly crash ongoing eastbound 10. The investigation continues right at Kellogg. All lanes blocked off here as well. Ladies. Kalina, thanks so much. The time now 621. We are still tracking the Southland storm. The atmospheric river now blanketing the mountains in snow and fog. And a lot of people wondering if it could impact air travel. We have the latest details on the flight status of planes leaving LAX. That's right ahead.
All right, welcome back. It's not just rain slamming the Southland in the San Bernardino Mountains. We're seeing snow, fog and wind as well. On the drive on Highway 18 to Big Bear, conditions are dicey because of that thick fog. Look at that. Oh. And remember, if you do have to drive today, just be especially careful. Basically, no visibility yeah. there. Well, it is a somber day at the Vatican. This is a live look just hours after the remains of former Pope Benedict the 16th were buried in a tomb in the grotto there. Thousands of mourners from all over the world packed St. Peter's Square. Mani di unzione e benedizione che lo spinsero a consegnarsi anche it was a historic moment with Pope Francis presiding over his predecessor's funeral in St. Peter's Square. During the Mass, Pope Francis hailed Benedict as a faithful friend. The coffin was later taken back inside the basilica and encased in zinc before being sealed in a second wooden casket. Pope Benedict shocked millions of Catholics when he resigned back in 2013. He was the first to do so in 600 years. Pope Benedict died last Saturday at the age of 95. Well, House Republicans will try for the third day in a row to elect a speaker after six unsuccessful attempts over two days. KCAL News' Tom Waite has the details from the newsroom. The House of Representatives remains in limbo as GOP leader Kevin McCarthy's bid for the speaker's gavel stands on the precipice. Wednesday, he lost three more votes, bringing his losses to six, all at the hands of 20 so-called GOP rebels who are blocking his victory to net concessions on limiting power if he wins. House members reconvene at noon. That was Tom Waite for us. Ahead of the Republican negotiations that took place late into the night, McCarthy reiterated that he has no plans to step aside. The Newport Beach man behind the college admission scandal has been sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Here's video of Rick Singer leaving court in Boston after his day in court. Wealthy parents paid Singer to get their kids into elite schools. There were more than 50 arrests and convictions, including celebrities Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin. NFL safety DeMar Hamlin remains in critical condition this morning. Yeah, so many people rooting for him across the country. His team, the Buffalo Bills, says his condition is improving, though. Hamlin's uncle says he was receiving 100% of his oxygen from a ventilator, but that has now been cut in half. And, of course, for the league, the pain is still fresh. At a press briefing yesterday, league executive Troy Vincent fought back tears. My greatest fear had flashed in front of me, but for the goodness and grace of God, and DeMar is still here and he's still fighting. Mm. Around the country, support continues to grow for Hamlin. Buffalo Bills blue lighting up Niagara Falls and a GoFundMe Hamlin started for his charity before his injury, now approaching $7 million. The time now, 627, and we continue our live team coverage of that powerful storm slamming the Southland. And with all this rain, there is growing concern in burn scar areas. We'll have a closer look at the preps. Stay with us. You are watching KCAL News Mornings at 6.
KCAL News Mornings. And good morning. Today is Thursday, January 5th. I'm Marcy Gonzalez. I'm Rudy Bay Shabasi. Here are the stories we're tracking this morning. The big storm has touched down. The Southland now getting the brunt of a massive bomb cyclone. Like they say, it doesn't have a chance to soak in, and then that's all got to go somewhere. Plus, communities on edge, the growing threats of flooding and mudslides. And that rain could bring dangerous road conditions already has across the Southland. What could you do to keep yourself safe? And that is the big story. The big storm is here and we have been tracking the storm's path and how it could affect your day from the conditions out on the roads to the evacuations in place. We have live team coverage all morning long. Our reporters are out in the field chasing the rain and the fallout. But here in the studio, we have our Chris Holmstrom and assignment desk manager Mark Liu looking at all the big breaking weather news. And Kalina Strinos is tracking road conditions. But we begin today with Olga Espina and your next weather forecast. Olga. Hi, good morning, ladies. Yes, we are tracking a lot of rain across Southern California. We've been experiencing it in the overnight hours. And as you get on the roads uh, for this uh, morning commute, it is going to be heavy rain for some of you. So here's a look at what is happening. We're seeing some of those stronger cells in the foothills, the mountains of the San Gabriel Valley. Still some moderate rain as we continue into parts of the Inland Empire. And yes, also some snow with the system out through some of those resorts. We are getting some snow, but those levels will continue to lower as we head into the afternoon, evening, and even early Friday. So I'll continue tracking this for you all morning long. For now, we're going to take a look at the roads, and Kalina Strinos is tracking that for Good morning. Good morning. We do have this uh, deadly crash that we've been tracking all morning for you. The investigation continues here. This is the eastbound side of the 10 right at Kellogg Drive. All lanes are still blocked off here. That backup now as you leave West Covina and head toward the 57. Traffic is being diverted onto the 57 freeway, but if you have to head out, you can take the 210 or the 60 freeways instead. That'll help you get around that delay. Flooding continues northbound 710 right at the 91. Only the left lane is not flooded right now. All other lanes are seeing some issues here that's causing problems in both directions of the 710 right around the 91. Same thing goes for the 91. We had a crash that hit the guardrail there. They're now working to repair that guardrail and we have the off ramp blocked off because of it. You can see that black indicating the issues that we're seeing there. Again, this is on the 91 in both directions here on the 22. When I head out to Orange County, you can see both directions here um, somewhat moving nicely. looks like we do have some traffic out there overall, but not too bad of a commute and as we head on out toward the Inland Empire I want to give you an overview for you here. Everything else looks great, but again, the wet conditions causing lots of issues this morning, so please be careful if you do have to head out and leave plenty of space in between you and the car in front of you. Ruta Bay Marcy. Good advice, Kalina. Thank you. And there is particular concern, of course, in some of the recently burned areas across the Southland. KCAL 9's Cara Finstrom is live in Duarte with the latest. Cara. Good morning. Sheriff deputies out patrolling these streets as the rain continues to come down. You can see the key rails have been put up here along Mill Canyon Road. That's because this is one of the areas of greatest concern. About 25 homes here along this street are under a yellow alert that will last until tomorrow morning because of the fear that these rains could cause the hillsides above, which were badly damaged during the fish fire, to give way. Folks here, they have been through this drill before, and they say they've got their fingers crossed. Not the very last storm, but the storm before this one, it poured. And I didn't think anything of it. I went into my backyard to pull some plants, and I fell in a sinkhole. All the way down to my, my uh, knee here. So I'm, I'm not as worried as I, I was then. They're, they're all ready. Doherty City is just ready. And so far, so good out here. We have been getting quite a bit of rain, but everything seems to be getting soaked up or running down the street uh, very well. We'll keep you updated throughout the morning. Thank you. And as Kalina has been telling us all morning long, this rain is making for a dangerous and really tough commute. So we do want to get right to KCAL's Rick Montanez now, who's live in the Cajon Pass. Rick, how's it going out there? Wet and slow on the freeway, which things look for the most part pretty good. This is the 15 here at the 138 off ramp and you, those headlights coming toward us. That is the southbound lanes of traffic. We have seen a couple of spin outs, so dangerous conditions 
if you are not adjusting to what is on the road, which is, of course, a lot of rainwater. We talked with one woman just a short time ago who pulled over because of the rain. Super windy. Uh, my car is like all over the place and my I keep on hydroplaning. It's kind of crazy. You it's know, scary. Like, my sister's behind me the whole time. She's like, oh, my God, freaking out. Yes, yeah, so a pretty good idea of what these conditions are like for drivers this morning. Traffic is pretty heavy here in the southbound lanes of the 15 as people are starting their morning commute. So just take some extra time and know that it will take you longer to get to your destination. Reporting live in the Cajon Pass, Rick Montanez, KCAL News. Rick, thank you. And we have breaking news right now. Let's check in with the desk. Yeah, that breaking news coming out of Montecito right now. Now we're learning that a portion of the canyon of Montecito is under an evacuation order. Now the city has been preparing for this atmospheric river for the past few days, but we want to get Mark Liu into the picture right now because Mark, it's been five years since that deadly mudslide that happened back in, in 2018. 23 people were killed, over 100 buildings demolished because of this. And now um, we're more evacuation orders. You actually just spoke with the city. Yeah, right. The city of Montecito is very concerned concerned about this current rainstorm because of what happened back in 2018. As you said, that mud flow from the Thomas fire burn area was disastrous for the city, and this storm could cause some of the same problems. This is video from back in 2018. When we sent our news crews up there, we were just absolutely appalled at the amount of damage that we saw, and over 100 homes were destroyed in that area. Now, the city of Montecito is very concerned this could happen again, so take a look at my computer screen. This is the Montecito fire districts um, storm impact map I want to show you. It basically shows here it is. This is the area of Montecito and Carpinteria. These red areas basically here in the canyons are areas of extraordinary concern for the city of Montecito and these are the areas that are under an evacuation order. If you live in this area you need to get out because this storm last time caused extreme damage to those areas and loss of life. They want to prevent any of that that they can and so they are asking people in those areas to please leave immediately. All right, Mark, thank you. And we are tracking new details in a deadly officer involved shooting. This is an active investigation. Takar Smith was shot and killed at a Westlake apartment Monday when police say he refused to drop a knife and lunged towards officers multiple times. Body cam video of what happened will be available in the next 45 days. Gas prices didn't change today for LA County. The average price is still $4.53 for a gallon of regular. In Orange County, it dropped slightly to $4.56. In Ventura County, it's $4.55. And in the IE, gas went to $4.41. Caltrans is telling drivers that travel is really not recommended all across the state. This warning comes with a safety checklist that includes reminders, including to check your wiper blades and tire pressure before you drive, identify alternate routes, and make sure to bring a blanket, snacks, water, and a phone charger with you if you do have to travel today just in case. And a live look now at LAX, where traffic is building Close. up right now. There are 62 delays out of the airport, 18 cancellations. If you have a flight out of any of the, our local airports, arrive extra early and definitely expect some delays because of all of this weather we're dealing with. Yeah, good morning, ladies. Uh, what Roads outside are a mess, and uh, we're going to continue to experience that as we continue through the morning and even into the afternoon hours. So we've already seen some really heavy rain through parts of LA. Places like Woodland Hills already at three inches of rain, and we're going to continue seeing more over the next several hours. Here's a look at the San Gabriels. We're seeing some moderate to heavy rain through some spots up in the mountains. We're still getting some snow with levels lowering as we continue through through the day into early Friday. And here's a look at the big picture. So some spots seeing some dry conditions out through Ventura, some light rain, but we're still expecting more on the way. We'll continue tracking that for you as we continue through the morning. For now, a look at the roads that Kalina Strinos is tracking that for us. Good morning. And it's been busy out there this morning. We do have several problem spots out there. Lots and lots of delays. So please, if you can just stay home today, don't head out. You can work remote if that's an option for you. I just really want to urge you to just be careful. Uh, we're still looking at this deadly crash here, eastbound 10, right at Kellogg.
Kellogg Drive. No real update aside from all lanes are still blocked off and we're not quite sure when this will be lifted. Traffic does continue to build up here, so please take the 210 or the 60 freeways instead. We still have this flooding on the northbound 710 right at the 91. Uh, you can see traffic building on the southbound 710 approaching the 91 as well as the northbound side. And then I do want to give you a look at Orange County 5 North at Red Hill. A new problem here, carpool lane off limits. Ladies. All right, Olga, thank you. Time now 640 and still to come. Our coverage of the major storm with rain all over the Southland continues. And good morning, everybody. Our big storm has caused quite a stir on social media from sky cow shots straight from a movie to a preview of possible lightning we could see here. I'll have much more at the social desk in just a few. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to KCAL News this morning at 6 and streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. The time now, 644. And we are seeing the full brunt of this atmospheric river hitting our part of the state, and we got a taste of it last night locally. Yeah, and parts of Northern California, we're really seeing Mother Nature's wrath. Let's go to Kristen Smith now at the social desk for more on that. And you've been seeing these videos coming in. Yeah, good morning, ladies. Images, you could even say, are flooding in on social media. And we're grateful for all of you tagging KCAL in your weather pictures so we can get them on the air. I want to pull up my first post and uh, give you a look at a very eerie sight over L.A. from the sky as this storm moved in. Sky Cal flying above overnight. Now, we've time-lapsed this video for you so you can really see the clouds hanging low and the rain moving in. Rain cleared just enough for us to fly for about an hour or so. There was some moderate rain you can see there on the windshield, but then it really started to pick up. So the commute this morning is what a lot of people are talking about. And uh, ladies, you know, Kalina has been doing a great job uh, covering the roadways and traffic. How was your commute as I came from Burbank to Studio City on the 134 West? It was that big neon sign that Rick Montanez and Cara Finstrom have been, been uh, showing that says, listen, if you can hold off driving until tonight, then you should. 
I just am happy to be here <laughs> right yeah, now. I'm yeah. glad I made it. It was like a, a 10 and 2 focus going way <laughs> under the speed limit kind of commute and you have to be really careful out there. It was and that's a good tip 10 and 2 and next up well with rain comes thunder and lightning and the lightning strikes have already touched down in parts of Northern California. Uh, we got some great posts about this and some video to show you posted by Michael Steinberg in the small town of Ione, which is roughly 50 miles southeast of Sacramento. Take a look at that. Wow. Mother Nature just lighten up the night sky there. And we have another clip to show you. This one comes in from Donovan Johnson, not too far away. Just intense lightning. You can hear the rain coming down hard. This is less than a mile from Johnson's house. So lightning striking ab above your home. That's got to be frightening. And this is the kind of weather we typically see in hurricane or tropical storm type conditions. So just those bright flashes in the night sky is just incredible to see. Definitely be safe out there. And if there is lightning, of course, experts say to to stay inside if you can. And ladies, uh, lastly, I want to show you our KCAL viewers are kind of seeing the bright side this morning. They are sharing a little irony with us this morning. And so uh, take a look at this. I want to uh, pull up a post and uh, show you for yourself. This is Sergio Batista driving in the rain while ironically listening to this song, It Never Rains in Southern California. <laughs> a little humor for your morning. And hey, I want to give a quick shout out to Joseph Ramoni as well, who's giving us a little expert advice this morning, KCAL viewer. And he says, number one, go slower. Number two, keep more distance between you and the car in front of you. And number three, go slower. <laughs> That's a good yes. advice. I'm a little worried for Sergio, though. I hope he's not taking video right now in these conditions. Exactly not. I hope not. And so you've got to just be super safe out there. But we do appreciate uh, all the posts and keep them coming and tag KCAL. Yes, absolutely. Thank Thanks right. so much, Kristen. Okay, now we will send it over to Olga with the very latest storm track. Yeah, hi, ladies, and I have one more tip. If you can stay home, do so because it is a mess out there. Take a look at our three hour loop satellite radar showing us still some rain, some pockets of heavy rain, and that's still going to continue as we head into the afternoon hours. So out through the San Gabriel Valley up in the mountains, we're seeing also a mix of rain and some snow levels will be lowering as we head into this afternoon and into this evening, even early tomorrow. Tomorrow. And uh, here's a look at conditions. So uh, that storm is going to continue pushing to the east. Uh, let's take a look at this radar tracker together and show you what is happening as we head into the next uh, few hours. I'll take you hour by hour and show you where those heavy rain cells are, where you see those reds, oranges, yellows. That indicates some of that heavier rain that is moving into the IE as we head into right around mid morning. Still across uh, some spots through the LA County area and then by late morning we're actually seeing a lot of that out to the east. A lot of LA and Ventura getting a bit of a break from that intense rain. But as we head into the afternoon, yes, we still have some more heavy rain headed our way. Santa Clarita Valley being impacted right around 230 and then continuing to still see some showers in the afternoon. Not as widespread as what we're experiencing right now. And then by 630, a lot of that heavy stuff out through the Coachella Valley and uh, continuing to taper off as we head into late tonight and into early Friday. In fact, we're going to continue with some dry conditions as we head into your Saturday. Also, there is some rain to our north that we're going to get a little bit of a break, potentially still talking about more wet weather as we head into early next week. But we're talking a lot about flooding. We have flood watch in place across our region, and the reason for that is because we've had days and days of rain. That soil is saturated, and uh, all this rain that's falling now is just pulling and running off quickly. So uh, we're going to continue to see those flash flood dangers. Also mud and debris flow for those recent burn areas. I'll continue tracking that for you throughout the morning. For now, we're going to check in with Kalina Strinos tracking the roads for us. Good morning. It's been very, very busy out there. We do have a live look at one of our cameras. This is a 210 or excuse me, a 215 freeway right at Martin Luther King Boulevard. You can see a lot of cars out there this morning. Brake lights, of course. So please, I cannot stress this enough. Give yourself extra time, and if you do have to head out, make sure you have plenty of space in between you and the car in front of you. We are still tracking this deadly crash. This happened hours ago, eastbound 10 right at Kellogg Drive. We have all lanes blocked off still. No known duration on when it's going to open up right now. We do have alternate routes for you, though. You can take the 210 or 60 freeways. And then this problem spot right now, the 105 East at Long Beach Boulevard, running a traffic break to get this crash out of the way. Ladies. 
All right, thank you so much for that. And you may Good or morning, Bama. may Good not. Morning, Jake. You may or may not enjoy traveling by bus, but we have the story of a bus you'll probably love. I think so, just based <laughs> on the looks of that. And because it's not for people, this is for pups. We'll have that story just ahead. Taking a live look now at the numbers on Wall Street today and uh, the d the Dow is down about 374 points. U.S. stocks closed higher yesterday after the minutes from last month's Federal Reserve meeting showed a continued interest in containing inflation. The Dow jumped 133 points. The Nasdaq gained 71 points and the S&P 500 rose 28 points. And there are more job losses ahead for the tech industry. Amazon now says it'll cut more than 18,000 jobs this year, a big increase over last year's initial announcement that around 10,000 employees would be laid off. General Motors is back on its perch as the nation's top auto seller after reporting that it sold 2.27 million vehicles in the U.S. in 2022. GM's 2.5% rise in sales last year uh, was largely driven by purchases of gas-powered trucks and SUVs. The Detroit automaker reclaimed the crown from rival Toyota, which reported 2.1 million vehicle sales last year. Okay, there is much more news ahead. We want to send it over to Jamie Yukis yes. with a look at what is coming up at 7. Did you guys know it's raining? Is it? <laughs> I had a vague idea. Okay, well, I'll tell you what it is. But that, we're going to be continuing to follow all of these storms, specifically in the 7 o'clock hour. We're going to go down to Orange County, check in with them uh, because it is hitting all over SoCal. And we're getting a new look at fog, wind, and snow in the mountains. That looks pretty, doesn't it? It does. It does. Hunker down, though, ladies. This storm leaving no part of SoCal untouched at this point. Plus, we're tracking brand new details in a disturbing murder spree on a college campus. Why all eyes are now on a pending decision from a judge. We should learn new information throughout the morning on this one. Everything else going on at 7. Okay, Jamie, thanks so much. And we will continue our coverage of this major storm hitting the Southland when we come back.
Good morning. Taking a live look at LAX, you can see all of that traffic. No surprise on a stormy morning like this. There are a lot of delays and cancellations at LAX, so make sure you check before you head out. Well, it definitely isn't a Greyhound Good morning, bus. Alabama. Good morning, Jake. It definitely isn't a Greyhound bus, but there are hounds in it. Nothing but dogs jump into their assigned seats here and they're attached to leashes rather than seat belts all along the way. It picks up waiting passengers with wagging tails. They even get a complimentary treat with their ride. The doggy bus is operated by Mo Mountain Mutts in tiny Skagway, Alaska. It's a husband and wife team offering dog training and dog walking. And by the looks of it, they might have been better behaved than a busload of kids. Okay, and now let's go to our assignment manager, Mark Liu, with the stories we're tracking today. Mark. Yeah, thanks, Marcy. It is almost time for our first editorial meeting, and I want to give everybody a preview of what we're going to be talking about today, but let's be honest, there is one big story in Southern California, and that's the rain. We have rain everywhere, and we have got people all over uh, the city covering that. Take a look at my computer screen. I want to show you some of the things we've got. Santa Clarita rain, San Gabriel Valley mud concerns, Orange County and Inland Empire rain, and the metro area. We are going to have people in all of these places. There are some other things Things, though that I want to try and get to today. There's going to be a, a, a press conference in the Crenshaw area about a fatal hit and run from earlier. Billy Idol's supposed to get a star on the Walk of Fame today. That's going to be kind of in the rain. And also there's going to be a po uh, mass for Pope Benedict at the uh, cathedral downtown. We're going to try and get to that. All of these things and of course the day's breaking news and there's going to be a lot of it. Marcy, we're going to cover it all here at the desk. Back to you. Mark, thanks so much. And CBS Mornings is coming up at the top of the hour on CBS Los Angeles. Tony DeCopel has a preview from New York. Good morning, Marcy. Good morning, Ruta Bay. Good to see you guys on this Thursday. we got a great show coming up in just a few minutes on CBS Mornings. We have a CBS News investigation into the technology inside the Russian military drones currently terrorizing Ukraine's civilian population. Why are some key parts being made by Western companies? Also, we're in London for reaction to new allegations by Prince Harry, who, according to new excerpts released by The Guardian, Harry writes in his new memoir he got into a physical altercation with his brother, Prince William. Plus, David, as in Begno, he's got a magical story about a little girl who goes to great lengths to get the pet of her dreams, not the pet you're thinking of. All that and more at 7. Tony, thanks so much. And we are kicking off another four hours of local news here on KCAL. KCAL News Mornings at 7 starts right now. A massive storm hits the Southland, prompting a state of emergency. Rain is pouring down and drivers are feeling the impact. Like, we're not driving. I'm too scared. Plus, it's not just rain. The atmospheric river is blanketing the mountains in snow and fog. And to make matters worse, a water main break adding to the flooding risk. From fallen trees to mudslide risk, we're tracking all these hazards as millions across the Southland hunker down for a major storm. This is KCAL News Mornings. And good morning. Today is Thursday, January 5th. I'm Ruta Bay Shabazi. I'm Jamie Yukas. We're dry in here, thank goodness. Thank goodness. What a wet one. Barely. Thanks for waking up with <laughs> us here on KCAL News Mornings and streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. All right, well, we are tracking that powerful storm, this atmospheric river that is pounding the Southland. This is a satellite image showing just how big it is. And look at that. You can see it from space. Yeah, we it's, it's enormous, right? And it's spinning. We've got team coverage and reporters on the ground. This typically does form in the wintertime when cold and warm air mass collides. Let's get to Olga Ospina to track all of it for us right now. Good morning, ladies. Yes, very happy to be in studio this morning as well because it is a mess out there. It is raining and it is cold and dangerous on the roads too. So here's a look at our three hour loop satellite radar showing us that storm pushing in from the west, moving east and really all of us are being impacted by this today. So I'll show you some of those problem spots at the moment. It's really for some of those mountain areas for the foothills of the San Gabriel Valley into those mountain areas where you see those yellows, those oranges that indicates that heavy rain and that's going to continue to push off uh, to the east. We have some snow. It is high right now, but levels lowering down to about 
5,500, 6,000 feet as we head into later today. Some of us not seeing some rain, but it is coming. We still have another wave of energy as we still do have a lot of rain to our north. That's working its way down and east, impacting all of us throughout much of your Thursday. I'll continue tracking that for you. And Kalina Strinos is tracking the roads this morning in your next traffic report. Good morning. Good morning. And we're seeing a lot of flooding out there because of the severe storm that we're seeing right now. This is actually one of the areas we have the north and southbound sides of the 710 impacted by flooding. This is right at the 91 connector road. You can see the southbound side of the 710 really starting to slow down northbound as well. If you can take the 605 to avoid that out in Orange County 91 heading east and westbound right at Glassell heavy volume of cars there overall though we're pretty much incident free throughout Orange County. That's the good news, but we still have this sig alert here. This is that deadly crash eastbound 10 right at Kellogg Drive. All lanes still blocked off. It says you leave West Covina and head toward Pomona. Take the 210 or the 60 freeways. That'll help you get around that delay. Ruta Bay, Jamie. There already, Kalina, thank you. Orange County also getting hit with flooding uh, all along the coast there. Yeah, no one is being spared this morning, mm -hmm. right? KCAL Michelle Geely is at roadblocks in Seal Beach right now where there's high winds, high surf. Hi, Michelle, how you doing? <laughs> Jamie and Ruta Bay, sideways rain. We talk about it all the time and it's happening out here today. Look at the sign of the times flooded. I'm at a roadblock here at Pacific Coast Highway in Huntington Beach, right at Warner Avenue. My photographer, Tim Kimball, is going to shoot a shot for you down southbound PCH. You don't often see this, an empty road. The reason why this is flooded. The road here through Bolsa Chica wetlands is a low lying area. And when we get a lot of rain, it's very typical that this section of Pacific Coast Highway closes. So here's what we've got going here. These folks behind me on Warner Avenue who want to turn left and head south uh, going through uh, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach cannot do it today. They have to take alternate routes. However, if you pick up Pacific Coast Highway farther down at Golden West, you can continue on through the beautiful cities of Newport, Laguna, etc. Now let me show you video we shot a short time ago in Seal Beach. What's happening there? Lots of rain, lots of wind. Uh, there's a low lying area there adjacent to Seal Way. There are several oceanfront homes there that you can see. Uh, a big swimming pool is created by all of this rain. Again, this happens typically during big storms. Now, Huntington, uh, Huntington and Seal Beach are also experiencing so much wind. You can see how the rain is just whipping around. Uh, lifeguards yesterday told me uh, that they're very concerned about heavy rain and the surf. High tide is coming in very soon, you guys, and we're told we could get surf of 10 to 12 feet. Check out right where I'm standing here. There's a few inches of water right at this intersection, just pooling here. This is how much it's rained in the last 30 minutes or so. We've been pounded by rain. You can see the wind. There's a lot of weather out here, you guys. I'll toss it back to you in the studio. And that puts it in perspective for us. Imagine driving through that and the cars and the uh, well, vehicles. And that's the biggest problem, right, Michelle, is that you'll see cars try to get through this and it's just, it's treacherous because you can spin out very easily in that type of water. Yeah, we were on the 405 making our way this way and we went through a huge puddle on the freeway unexpected because it was dark it slammed our windshield it's startling you know when these massive waves of water uh, slap your windshield so very hazardous out here something we're not used to either Michelle Dealey in Orange County Forest thank you so much it is a tough day for drivers and it extends throughout SoCal especially the Inland Empire right now where we're hearing it is very very wet and there are dangerous conditions there. In fact they are in a flood watch and wind advisory right now. We want to get to Rick Montana's in the Cajon Pass. Rick. Yeah certainly dangerous on the 15 right now.
I'll show you the traffic from our dash cam. We are on the 15 southbound, and you can see traffic is picking up pretty good. The rain is coming down pretty hard right now in the Cajon Pass. So dangerous and difficult conditions, as Michelle was talking about, with some of the standing water that may be in some of the lanes of traffic. Of course, it can be startling and it can be difficult to get through. So you have to, of course, take things a bit slower. We did talk with a driver just a short time ago. Not too bad leaving San Diego, but through here it's been rainy, quite rainy. And we're driving slow, taking it easy, but um, yeah, it seems like a lot of rain for this area. And certainly a lot of rain for this area, but of course, drivers are for the most part slowing down. We've seen a couple of spin outs here on the 15 with uh, single car crashes. There was one incident where there were two cars that had collided, it appeared. So, certainly dangerous conditions. So, take it easy when you're heading out onto the freeway, especially here in the Inland Empire, as the heavier parts of the rain are starting to fall right now. Reporting live in the Cajon Pass, Rick Montanez, KCAL News. Yeah, you can see just how hard it is driving there. Rick, Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. And there are concerns, of course, in the burn areas that just can't take all of this rain and the saturation, especially in the San Gabriel Valley. That's where Cara Finstrom is in Duarte. And Cara, what are you seeing there? Yet the rain has just continued to come down since we arrived here earlier this morning. Just behind us, those are some of the hillsides that were damaged by the fish fire. So look here, you can see that this rain is starting to pull up in low lying areas. And if they get too much at once, they're fearful that parts of these hillsides can come down. So about 25 homes here along Mel Canyon Road are of greatest concern. That's why they put up these K rails behind us. And if we walk backwards a little bit, you can also see that they've put up a street sign here to let folks know not to park along this street. Uh, they are concerned if there's a big rush of mud that comes down here or water, uh, no trash cans, no cars along this street. Now take a look at a sign that we saw on the freeway headed out this way from Pasadena. This is along the 210 asking folks not to travel if you don't need to today because even the freeways are going to see this accumulation of water in all of these hillside communities in the San Gabriel area. Neighbors here say they've been through this drill before and they're just keeping their fingers crossed today. A month ago, if you would have looked up here on the hill, it was brown, just brown and black. Now it's green, which is a good thing because I think things are growing again. Grass is growing again and, and little creatures will come back and, and live and eat off that. Road crews will be patrolling the roads for any mud flow, rock fall, uh, down trees along uh, county roadways. This will take place in the foothill communities up into the, the mountain roads. And we did just see a public works vehicle head up the street. They're keeping watch, kind of patrolling these areas. So far, everything seems pretty good this morning. Uh, the rain coming down, not super heavy right now, but it has been consistent. We'll keep you updated. All right, Cara, thank you. And we are tracking a lot of breaking news this morning. A big day out there, especially with weather. Let's go to our Chris Holmstrom at the desk. Chris. Yeah, Ruta Bay, our crews are staying so busy this morning covering all the damage in the area because all the heavy rain leads to saturated ground, and that is not good news for trees. I want to show you this video real fast. Uh, take a look. This is a video from Burbank showing a downed tree from earlier this morning. Uh, we can tell you that it fell on the ground because of all the saturation. Thankfully, no one was injured. But joining us now is Mark Lewis at the desk. Mark, we're also getting reports in West Hollywood. There is reports of a giant tree <clears throat> that has fell on a vehicle as well. And you're also covering outages, power outages in the area. Yeah, the trees that come down like this, they're always part of major rain events like we have here. And they are also part of the problem when it comes to power outages. Now, this one in Burbank fortunately didn't cause a power problem there. But I've been in touch with the two largest power agencies in Southern California, LEDWP and Southern California Edison. Come out to my screen here. I want to show you this. Is they are reporting nine major outages in Southern California, affecting about 2,300 customers. Now, they're all over. They stretch um, basically through their area across here all the way into the Inland Empire. I've also been in touch with LADWP. They're doing a little bit better. They only have 200 customers without power right now, right now due to this rainstorm, but they are saying that these outages may last a very long time, go all the way into the afternoon or the evening. Now, both of these agencies have all of their crews working to restore power. I'm going to stay in touch with them.
Okay, we want to check in now with Olga and weather. Hi, good morning, ladies. Yes, uh, we continue to feel those impacts from the rain and want to take you through the next several hours. We'll go hour by hour and show you when uh, that rain, the heaviest rain especially, is going to hit your neighborhood. So here we are, 8 a.m. We're starting to see a lot of the heavy rain. Uh, we just saw a car out uh, in the San Gabriel Valley. We're still seeing some rain out there moving into parts of the Inland Empire. By 9 a.m., a lot of rain for the IE and, yeah, some snow up in the mountains also. 10 a.m., still a line of very heavy rain there and continuing to push east by 11 a.m. Look at a lot of Ventura in L.A. We're finally getting a bit of a break from the rain, but we'll get a little bit more as we head into later in the afternoon. A lot of that out a little bit further east into the IE and uh, parts of Orange County will continue taking you through your day into the afternoon hours in just a few minutes. For now, a check of the roads. Kalina Sprino is tracking that for us in your next traffic report. Yes, and we've just issued a Sigler or they've just issued a Sigler, I should say, on the spot that we told you about that had a lot of flooding. So right now we've learned that only one lane is open. This is on the northbound side of the 710 right around Artesia. So right around the 91 connector road. You can see traffic building on the northbound side and also on the southbound side. We have speeds here down to 11 miles per hour, but you can also see your alternate routes this morning. The 605 looks great. We also have the 110 wide open in both directions to help you get around the 710. Investigation continues right now on the eastbound 10 right at Kellogg Drive. We still have all lanes blocked off. Take Take the 210 or the 60 to get around this. Ladies? Okay, the streets are a mess out there, and uh, there is street flooding across Southern California right now. Crews are working around the clock to try to keep things open and let people commute to where they need to go. It's pretty hard to do that, though, when the ground is so saturated and that water pools in so many different places to try to get it off the roadways. Let's go to Tina Patel, who's en route right now to West Hollywood, where we were hearing there are some trees down and some power outages as well. Tina, what are you seeing? Good morning. Yeah, right now the drive, we were uh, in the San Fernando Valley. Right now we're driving over the hill to West Hollywood. And so far this road looks okay. It looks like people are slowing down and really, you know, taking the, the road into con, uh, conditions into effect. So that is really good. But as you said, all morning long, we've been seeing problems with standing water, or possible flooding. Let me show you some video from Van Nuys. Just a little while ago, we were over there and the Sepulveda Basin, the roads were flooding there. They ended, ended up closing Burbank Boulevard between the 405 and Balboa Boulevard. They had to close Burbank completely in that area because of the flooding. It was really dark when we were there the morning and uh, cars that were going through before the closure, they just couldn't tell how much water was pulling up. So as we come back to our shot now, that is the reason that crews are really uh, keeping an eye on things that drivers might not realize how dangerous the conditions are. So they're just asking everyone to keep an eye. As we said, we're going to check out some more uh, issues in West Hollywood. We'll, we'll check back in with you ladies and when we have a better idea of what's going on there. All right, Tina, appreciate it. Stay safe out there. And we've been bringing you, of course, these live updates on the rain all morning long, but we want to take a look at some of what you have been seeing. Yeah, Kristen Smith joins us from the social desk this morning. We're starting off with a view from our own SkyCal this morning. Yeah, and good morning, ladies. I don't know if you've had enough of my weather puns, but uh, <laughs> no, keep, keep, keep them coming. coming. Viewer, I love it. Viewer images are pouring in this <laughs> oh, morning, like and we'll get to those. But first, I want to uh, show you a very eerie look at Los Angeles from above. This is a bird's eye view, if you will, and uh, really a last look at the rain we captured from Sky Cal. It was clear enough for our photographer to fly for about an hour last night and you can see the, the thick clouds there in the sky and some rain uh, coming over in downtown Los Angeles and you know the cars below we've been talking about these roads and you know ladies this isn't the day to rush. It's never a day to text and drive but it, especially today this is not the day because it's so easy on your morning commute to you know hydroplane with the, the water gathering in different areas on the roadways. How was your commute? That's, I felt lucky that, uh, that you made it here, that I got here and that there weren't that <laughs> right. many people on the roadway this morning because it was really, really slick and you hydroplaned very easily. Exactly. Well, I want to go up from high in the sky. Be careful out there, everybody, to all the way down to the sea. How about this? Take a look at Hermosa Beach. This was early this morning. Zachary Ellison shared this around two o'clock in the morning or so, and we appreciate you sharing your images with us and tagging KCAL. Uh, we have a look at the pier, and uh, he even said with the rain, you guys, Nightlife was still alive and well in the area. 
However, you ladies know the only club I like to go to. <laughs> club, club couch. couch. <laughs> club couch. You snuggle in on your sofa, and club couch might be a good idea for you today. And uh, I know we've been telling you to stay indoors if you can, but inside it can get a little drippy as Ooh. well. Yeah, so I want to show you uh, the scene last night. This is at Crypto.com Arena. Now, as I show you up close, don't blink or you might miss it. Okay, uh, do you see some drops of rain? We'll show you the close up right here. Okay, there's a few drops of rain oh, yeah. dripping oh, yeah. through the roof there, through the roof. Now, Lakers reporter Joe Van Buha shared this on his TikTok from the press row. Uh, it seems the fans and the team, you guys got spared. He commented, it was just drizzling on the press. <laughs> just, but you just know, one little drop, a little drop know, here and there. As press, we like to take one for the team. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Know, yes. Somebody's got to take it, we'll take it for you. But we, again, appreciate these images, you guys. Keep them coming. Uh, make sure you hashtag KCAL. We're so right. not used to it. So it's when you see just even a few drips inside, it's like, Whoa. Cell phone, pull out the cell phone. <laughs> exactly, and we do appreciate it because at the end of the day, we want to keep everybody safe. Yes. yes. All right, Kristen, Kristen thank, thank you. you. All right, well, it is not just the rain slamming the Southland. The San Bernardino Mountains were seeing snow there, fog and wind as well. The drive on the highway to 18 to Big Bear, conditions are dicey there because of thick fog. And remember, if you do have to drive today, be so careful. And as Kristen said, don't text, no. don't speed. And Olga, as we've mentioned, California now under a state of emergency. And the worry right now, of course, is those debris flows, the flooding, the mudslides. Yes, uh, you know, a lot of concerns there, especially for those recent burn areas and even all of us. I'll show you those watches and warnings in just a moment. We are all under a flood watch. We are experiencing some really heavy rain out there. So if you're not getting it where you are at the moment, just know that that storm continues to push through throughout the morning and even into the afternoon hours. So let's pick up where we left off Thursday at noon. So we're seeing a lot of that activity out through parts of the Inland Empire and uh, into parts of the Coachella Valley. A lot of Ventura and L.A. drying out, but we do have some cells moving in. Uh, as we head into later in the afternoon, still impacting parts of the Antelope Valley and a little bit further south into uh, parts of LA and OC. As we head into the 430 hour, there is that heavy rain out through the Inland Empire. We're starting to see also those snow levels lowering down to about 5,500, 6,000 feet. So the good news with the system is that a lot of those passes, uh, the I-5 through the grapevine, a lot of times uh, gets uh, so much snow, we see closures not expected to see a huge impact there. However, that area is experiencing some strong gusty winds as we head into later in the night. Things really start to clear out and for your Friday morning commute, things are looking a lot better. Some dry conditions on Friday and we're actually going to continue that trend even as we head into Saturday. Enjoy the bit of a break because we do have the potential for some more heavy rain as we head into the early part of next week. So we'll continue tracking that rain for you as well as those watches and warnings. We are under a high wind warning. We're talking about that Fraser Park area. We're talking gusts in that 70 to even 80 mile per hour range. We're also looking at a wind advisory for most of us and along the coastline. I know a lot of people this is uh, really not the best beach weather, but a lot of surfers head out there. And for places like the Ventura Harbor, we could be talking up to 15 foot waves. So really some dangerous conditions. We could see some flooding there as well. So I'll continue tracking this for you throughout the morning. For now, we're going to take a look at the roads. Kalina Sprinos tracking that part of the story in next traffic. Yeah, and we have some flooding out there right now on the 710, which I'll get to in just a second. But I want to take you out to Orange County, 57 heading north and southbound right at Ball. The road is soaked. You can't see cars on the roadway there. This is that traffic alert. They've issued a sig alert here because of the flood. Flooding. We're hearing three feet of water on the roadway here northbound side right at Artesia. You can see it's causing delays on the south side as well down to eight miles per hour. Take the 605 or the 110 freeways at alternate routes that will help you get around this. Ready Bay, Jamie? The time now 720 and climbing COVID cases and calls for precautions. Now we are tracking the impact. Yeah, plus a historic standoff on Capitol Hill as we go yet another day. Can you believe it without a speaker of the house? Oh, the drama we will take you inside the battle and break down what is next. And will we live to see a day a vaccine can cure cancer? I hope so. Brand new details about a scientific breakthrough. And our team coverage of this massive storm is continuing. We're live across the Southland this morning. You're watching KCAL News Mornings at 7.
Flipping stories is a break in the Idaho murder cases that we've been uh, talking about. Marcy's here to tell us about that. Marcy. Yeah, it is just such a disturbing case, as we know, and we hope that soon we'll get a look at some of the evidence and get a better picture of what led to this arrest. The man accused of killing those four University of Idaho students has been extradited from Pennsylvania to face murder charges. Brian Koberger was seen being escorted off a plane late last night. Idaho authorities are expected to release more details about the case once he is officially charged. Right now, though, the evidence is sealed. Meanwhile, all eyes are on Capitol Hill. House Republicans will try for a third day in a row to elect a speaker. So far, there have been six unsuccessful attempts. More than a dozen GOP members are keeping Bakersfield's Kevin McCarthy from reaching a majority of votes. And he keeps caving. He does. Mm -hmm. The House it cannot swear in its members or begin the day-to-day -day business until a speaker is elected. So this is really holding things up. They're going to give it another go today. Uh, another major story we're following this morning, Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th was laid to rest. Crowds of about 100,000 people gathered in St. Peter's Square for the funeral mass. And and Pope Francis presided over his predecessor's funeral. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops has called for nine days of prayer starting today, and there will be a special memorial mass at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Angels just a little after noon here in Los Angeles. And that Vatican was packed. It was. With, with people coming to pay their respects to him in, in Italy. Yes, absolutely. Marcy, thank you. Mm -hmm. Help is pouring in for the family of a fallen Riverside County deputy. Fundraising for Isaiah Cordero's family has surpassed its goal. The Help a Hero fundraiser has topped $100,000. Deputy Cordero was shot and killed by a convicted felon during a traffic stop last week. His funeral will be held tomorrow morning. This video is so hard to watch, but we want to show it to you because the search is on for the man who was caught on camera. Oh, I know, abusing a dog in Riverside County. You can see the man toss that dog over a razor wire fence and then just walk away like nothing happened. This happened last month at an abandoned cell tower in the Winchester area. Thankfully, the dog is okay and now at a shelter in Harupa Valley. Mask up and check your booster. COVID cases are climbing again. LA County has logged more than 2,300 new COVID cases in just the last week, as well as 1,200 hospitalizations and now 26 deaths. Time right now, 726. Well, we have live team coverage across Southern California as this massive storm hits us. I'm Tina Patel. We are just pulled up to West Hollywood where a tree came down in this storm. Looks like it went on a uh, car. We're gonna hop out and get more information for you. We'll have a live report coming up in just minutes. I'm Rick Montanez, live in the Cajon Pass where right now, we are actually working with CHP. They are trying to do a traffic break. There's a lot of crashes out here that they're responding to. We'll have a live update coming up. Cars cruising right along there. Might want to slow down. The big storm is here. We're diving into the mess as rain, wind, snow, and fog, we got it all, falls over SoCal. Like they say, it doesn't have a chance to soak in, and then that's all got to go somewhere. And where is it all going to go, all that water? We need the rain, right? But now multiple communities are bracing for potential debris flows. We anticipate that this may be one of the most challenging and impactful series of storms to touch down in California in the last five years. That is proving to be true. We're now under an official state of emergency across California. This means more first responders are on call to help at a moment's notice. Our team coverage continues now live across SoCal. We got you covered all over. Yeah, from the coast to the IE to the mountains, we are monitoring the rain, the flood risks impacting all of us, also the traffic hazards. We'll check in live with our reporters spread across the Southland in just a minute, but first Olga Ospina is walking us through what's next. Olga. Hi, good morning, Rudabay, Jamie. We are looking at still some wet weather across Southern California throughout the day. Want to show you those watches and warnings we have in place. So we have a flood watch, and really that's going to be for all of us. For 
for that really intense rain that we've been experiencing since the overnight hours. Up in the mountains, winter storm warning. We're expecting a lot of snow. This is going to be high elevation snow. And as we head into later tonight, those levels will be lowering. Strong winds. If you travel through the I-5, through the grapevine, we have a high wind warning. Gusts there could reach nearly 70 to 80 miles per hour. Wind advisory really for a lot of the rest of us, especially out through the IE, inland Orange County. That's going to continue through at least the afternoon hours. So I'll continue tracking this rain for you, let you know when we finally get a break from this intense rain. In the meantime, Kalina Sprino is tracking the roads for us in your next traffic. Yes, and I have a live look right now on the 10 right at Sierra. This is in the inland Empire where we're seeing a heavy, heavy backup here uh, in your camera. You can see it's on the westbound side there as you continue and also on the eastbound side. We do have delays this morning because of two problems that we have out there. So if you're going to be traveling eastbound right at 10, we just got an update. All lanes were blocked off because of this deadly crash. We have learned that two right lanes are open. All other lanes, though, are still off limits and you can still take the 210 or the 60 to get around that. And then on the westbound side, we're seeing delays here right at Monte Vista, the left lane block off there. That's causing a backup now from the 15. This is a big problem. Another SIG alert for you. This is because of flooding we have in the roadway. Only one lane open northbound 710 right at Artesia. And ladies, you can see both directions just jam packed right now. Back what, to you. What a mess. And of course, the storm causing all kinds of chaos across the south end. We now have breaking news in West Hollywood. Yeah, we'd like to go to Tina Patel where you know the ground is so saturated. It turns out the tree fell. Wow, look at that behind you, Tina. Yeah, and the unfortunate thing is you never know when something like this is going to happen. We're on Lexington Avenue just off of Fairfax, and take a look at the root of this tree. It's a big one that came down just within the last hour. We are assuming that the storm and the saturation of the ground had something to do with it. Now, fortunately, no one hurt, but as we step back out, you can see that the tree actually came down on two vehicles, this one here, and then we have to actually go all around these branches to see the other vehicle that the rest of the tree has landed on. Now, again, the good thing is this is early in the morning. No one was out. No one was in the street at the time, so no injuries, but a big cleanup here in West Hollywood. And now the concern is, are any of the other trees that are in this area also going to have these problems right uh, if you kind of look up there is another big large tree that was right next to it the fire department we're told was here and kind of looking at that and they don't know if the roots are similar to the one that came down so there's a lot of concern this morning about whether this could happen again right now the good thing as we say no one injured but lexington avenue going to be closed for a while while this cleanup's underway we'll send it back to you what a way to wake up for that person whose car is crushed under that tree no kidding tina thank you all right, well, the heavy rain in the Inland Empire uh, is falling there as well as across the Southland. The road conditions are dangerous everywhere. Caltrans, of course, is working uh, warning drivers to delay travel if you can. Just hunker down if you can. Rick Montanez is live in the Cajon Pass where you're seeing all of this firsthand, Rick. Yeah, and we're actually watching CHP right now. We'll switch over our cameras here and show you. CHP was just running a traffic break because you could see this car right in front of us. Uh, a single car crash on the freeway here right at Glen Helen Parkway. We also talked with another driver just a few minutes ago. Same thing. He said he spun out and was actually rear-ended. These tow truck drivers, have, as we've mentioned earlier this morning, are having to do a lot of work. They're trying to clear these single vehicle crashes right off the freeway to get traffic flowing. Of course, CHP running this traffic break also slowed things down, but the heavy rains are coming down right now here in the Inland Empire. So if you take this commute through the Cajon Pass, just know that you may run into some of this. You may run into other cars that have spun out or you may run into CHP running these traffic breaks. Certainly some dangerous conditions here on the freeway. Reporting live in the Cajon Pass, Rick Montanez, KCAL News. Unfortunately, that probably will not be the only incident no. like that we see today. Uh, the rain is, of course, making things worse in Northern California, too. That's where they're really getting slammed with this storm. Uh, the damage started with this last round of rain. It's been a deadly storm so far. Jonathan Vigliotti is in Wilton, which is in Sacramento County. And Jonathan, I know you've seen tragedy. Talk to family members firsthand who lost loved ones already in the storm. What are you seeing this morning? Yeah, incredible flooding this morning. This area received a month's worth of rain in less than a 24 hour period of time. We're talking about four inches. There's a levee system here that was built to hold back the raging river. It broke over the holiday weekend, which is why you're seeing this flooding. This is not a river. 
This is not a lake. This is all flood water, and the water could creep up as the day carries on. The heavy wind and, of course, the rain that we saw earlier today, it appears at this point to have moved on, but not before bringing down a number of trees and power lines. Similar conditions in the San Francisco Bay Area, where there are tens of thousands at this hour without power, and a tragic story there. A tree falling on a mobile home with a family of three inside. Police later confirming that a toddler was killed in the incident. Uh, meanwhile, as the cleanup, the surveying continues on for good reason. Officials are asking people to stay off the roads inside if possible until later on tonight. Are just unbelievable there, and such tragic news for that family. And of course, there is huge concern about the levee. Is there any uh, progress in repairing it? Yeah, so that crew, we were with them yesterday as they were working really against the clock, trying to repair five breaks in that levee system before the storm arrived. They were unable to fix all of it, which is perhaps why we're seeing a lot of this flood water continue to creep in. This is a system that it's important to point out was recently rebuilt over a 20 year period of time. It cost $20 million to do so. It was meant to last until the year 2050. It took a single storm to do all of this. Unreal. Jonathan Vigliotti, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. We are tracking a lot of breaking news this morning. Let's go to our assignment manager, Mark Liu, at the desk. As if we didn't have enough water, Mark, a water main break? Uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. You know, Jamie and Rudabay, we had heard that there was street flooding in the Mid-Wilshire area, so we actually sent someone down there to investigate. Let me show you what we found. Take a look at this video. There was certainly street flooding there, but it wasn't from the rain. It's not like we needed more water on the street today. This ended up being a very large water main break near La Brea and Wilshire. Now, we don't know why this thing bust open yet, but LADWP was notified and they worked to shut off the water flow valve as soon as they could. You know, one southbound lane of La Brea is still affected, but there's still just water everywhere. It is causing a mess and, you know, it's also still coming from the sky. So there's going to be some trouble getting through that area right now. But that is the very latest here from the desk. Back to you. And good morning, everyone. Yes, uh, we are seeing a lot of rain. Uh, we were talking about that rain up north. Uh, we are seeing still a lot of heavy rain and uh, even here in our area as well. So the storm has officially arrived in Southern California in those overnight hours and will continue through the morning and even into the afternoon. We're seeing some pockets of some heavy rain uh, still at the San Gabriel Valley. Of course, we have some of those recent burn scars there and up in the mountains. We're also seeing some snow with those levels lowering as we head into the afternoon and into the evening hours. The good news is a lot of those passes, if you travel through the grapevine, that is not expected to be heavily impacted, at least by the snow. We're still looking at some really strong gusty winds. Want to take you through the next several hours and show you what to expect. We'll see some heavy rain again, especially through those foothills and mountains as we head into the 8 o'clock hour. I'll continue taking you through the morning and the afternoon as we head into the next few minutes. For now, let's take a look at the road all that for us on your next traffic report. And we have a tough drive right now on the five heading northbound right around Lakewood. This is the camera that's right behind me. And as we take it full, you'll see stop and go delays heading northbound here as you head toward the 605 and beyond that into the uh, downtown area. We have a look right now at the deadly crash. This is the eastbound side of the 10 freeway. This is as you continue your drive toward the 57. Um, you can see that black there. It's still very, very slow in the area. Only two right lanes are open and we have delays backed up now as you leave West Covina. Also on the westbound side of the 10, we have a crash blocking that far left lane. That is causing a delay now from the 15. Ladies. It's a mess out there. Kalina, thank you. Time now 740 and our team coverage of this massive storm slamming Southern California continues. Yeah, if you can stay in bed, just do that today. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> right? It's not just impacting SoCal either. We're getting a look now at scary moments to our north. We just talked to Jonathan Vigliotti. This is new video showing a man slipping into rushing water. Mm. You're watching KCAL News Mornings. Now, gray out there, except for the Ferris wheel on the pier. Welcome to KCAL News <laughs> Mornings at 7 and streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. The time now, 7.44. I don't think I'd want to be sitting on there, though. No, definitely not. <laughs> or, or attending in any form, exactly. right? And we have an update on breaking news in West Hollywood. Yeah, we want to get to Tina Patel because we were talking about that giant tree that had fallen on a car. And Tina, I heard you talked to the car owner. 
Yeah, this is again, this is one of two cars that this eucalyptus tree came down on in West Hollywood just in the last hour. And Kyle Neal is with me. She was actually, were you sleeping when you heard this noise? I'm actually a very early riser, so I'd been up, I already did Wordle, <laughs> and uh, I just heard this noise and couldn't tell what direction it was coming from and came outside and saw that the tree was down. Now, you and your husband are kind of taking this in stride, saying, like, at least no one was here, or at least no one got hurt. But this is a big mess that you're going to have to take care of now. Yeah, it is, but that's why you have insurance, and that's why you have the great L.A. Fire Department right down the block, mm -hmm. the West Hollywood Sheriffs. I mean, I called, and they were here immediately, started cutting it all down, and, um, yeah, it's... And, and you and I were just saying you were from the Bay Area. There are a lot of eucalyptus trees up there. You actually said that a friend of yours, what did they say about eucalyptus trees? We would go hiking and he would refer to them as the silent killers. And we were, it was always just sort of a joke, but it was the idea was they have a shallow root system and so they can fall easily. So as soon as they came out, I thought, ah, the silent killer struck, so. Well, I'm so sorry. I'm glad that you were okay and everybody is okay. Yeah. And, and Kyle actually has such a great um, sense about this. When you walked close, what did you say about the smell? I said, it smells so good out here. It's like a spa. <laughs> It's eucalyptus. I think from now on it would be better to just go to a spa and smell the eucalyptus <laughs> exactly. than have it come down on your car. But I'm glad that you're okay. Thank you so much. Good luck with all the insurance dealing with this. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And ladies, before I let you go, I just want to tell you that the uh, fire department and public works, they are going to be looking at the other trees in this neighborhood. Make sure that they are okay. And then also start this cutting up process to actually clean this and get the street back open. We'll send it back to you. Thank you. And we can all learn a lot from Kyle. Yeah, just be calm, <laughs> yeah. cool, collected. Also, what is her Wordle score this morning, out of curiosity? Do we know? Uh, what's the Wordle score you got? Uh, today was five <laughs> out of six. So <laughs> yesterday I got it in two. Oh, but everybody. you're off to a good start. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Kyle. Rough morning for Kyle I there want to be more in many like ways. Kyle, so, <laughs> yes, in her disposition. Tina, thank you. All right, well, in the Bay Area, Swift Water rescue teams have already been called into action. And you can see firefighters pulling a homeless man from Los Gatos Creek in San Jose after he fell in last night. His girlfriend says he was trying to grab some of their belongings when he slipped on that bank. Fire and rescue crews were able to throw him a rope and luckily pull him out. Here closer to home, both the L.A. County and City Fire Departments have additional swift water rescue crews on the ready. They'll be monitoring the normal hot spots, including the L.A. River, Spolvada Basin, and Hanson Dam. They've also brought in an extra helicopter just in case. Oh, such dangerous conditions out there, and we're experiencing that here at home also. So I'm going to continue taking you through the morning, I'll show you what to expect and when that heavy rain is going to be arriving in your neighborhood. As we head into the next hour, 830 AM, we are seeing plenty of rain still through San Gabriel's making their way into the Inland Empire. And where you see those yellows, oranges, reds, just know that that is that heavy rain impacting parts of Orange County as we head into 930. And by 1030, a lot of that a little bit further east, so parts of the IE into the Coachella Valley, Orange County, not looking too bad out through Ventura County and parts of LA being dry as well. So you'll see some pockets of some dry weather before another wave of energy starts to move through. So we're going to continue with this wet weather even as we head into the afternoon. 130 again, a lot of that to our east, and we're even seeing some dry conditions for parts of the IE into LA. By 3.30 in the afternoon, there is that next line of very heavy rain moving through parts of the Antelope Valley into parts of Orange County as well as LA. So we'll continue to see those pockets of heavy rain and that's going to continue really as we head into this evening. Then things really start to wind down, snow levels drop. Not enough, though, to cause that too much impact to those mountain passes and then dry conditions expected for Friday and Saturday. I know a lot of us looking forward to that little bit of a break because we're still looking at more rain on the horizon as we head into the early part of next week. So a big concern with this storm because we've seen so much rain places like Woodland Hills, three inches, more than four inches for some of our mountains is flooding and we really have a danger of flooding across Southern California. All of us under a flood watch with this major storm. So move to higher ground and a big danger comes when you're driving because just one foot of water will float vehicles. So definitely take it easy out there on the roads. Turn around. Don't drown. Remember that saying because uh, we're looking at a lot of rain and uh, some windy conditions too. We have high wind warnings and wind advisories 
for a lot of us. So I'll continue tracking the storm for you throughout the morning. For now, let's take a look at the roads. Kalina Screenos tracking all that for us. Good morning. Olga, great advice. And honestly, if you don't have to hit the road this morning, please don't. Just stay home. Work remote if you can. Uh, we do have this traffic alert to tell you about. We have an update on this one. This is flooding that we've had on the southbound 710 now at the 91. We've learned only one lane is open. Speeds down to two miles per hour. And then on the northbound side, right at the 91, traffic is being taken off at or Tisha Boulevard. So you can see that heavy backup there almost coming off the 405. Do yourself a favor, and if you usually take the 710, you can go ahead and try the 605 or the 110 freeways to get you around that. Orange County, pretty quiet as far as crashes impacting traffic. We have a look at the 57 at Catella. You can see raindrops on the lens, but speeds are up. Ladies? Yeah, people weren't taking it easy this morning, Kalina. Not Thank you all. for that. No, and they should. They should. That's yes. my tip of the day. <laughs> Time right now, 750 this morning, and there is a push to make sure everyone has a roof over their head. We'll show you the new strategy to combat the homeless crisis. And a shocking announcement from one of the biggest companies in the world, why Amazon is making global headlines this morning. traveling that be aware we are going to continue to monitor the situation and bring you any developments as they become available. Jamie Rudebe, back to you. Mark, thank you. The city of LA is stepping up efforts to get homeless people indoors. Yeah, the new safe inside program is now underway in Venice. A new temporary housing site has been set up near a camp at the intersection of Sunset and Pacific Avenue. Amazon is laying off 18,000 employees. That is a big increase over last year's initial estimation, and it's not the only company slashing jobs. Cloud computing software company Salesforce says it will cut more than 7,000 jobs. A cancer treatment breakthrough. Scientists are working to turn brain cancer cells into a working vaccine. Pretty incredible, right? The idea is to eliminate tumors and provide long-term immunity. The testing hasn't moved to humans yet, but we're told it did work in mice. Wow. Time now, 7.54. Our team coverage of the storm is continuing live. I'm Cara Finsterman Duarte, where as this rain continues to fall, all eyes are on the hillsides just above. Concerns here about possible mud flows from a burn scar. come flowing down the street. They want to divert it away from these homes. There are about 25 homes here, which will remain under a yellow alert through tomorrow. Back to you. All right, Cara, thank you. And this major storm hitting the south end, of course, the big story today. We have live team coverage showing you what's happening outside your door in just minutes. And he's telling us all about what's going on in the rain. Good morning, everyone. Live look outside. There is our satellite radar. You can see a lot of rain to our north, but here in Southern California also, we are feeling that rain, the snow, the gusty winds and elevated surf. All the details on this major storm coming up. We want to be transparent with you. A little technical issue there, but we, we're talking to people in the rain. Michelle Geely is in uh, Orange County this morning, and then we have a big star here in studio with us at 8, the host of the talk. Jerry O'Connell is going to join us to talk about what's new with the show. And you know, he always brings it. So wait for that. <laughs> this is KCAL News Mornings. A storm to remember. If you are just waking up, good morning. And here's what the radar looks like right now as this major storm brings heavy rain. It's coming through the Southland. The governor already declaring a state of emergency. Good morning. The time now is 7.59. Today is Thursday, January 5th. I'm Rudy Bay Shabazi. I don't know about you, but if you're just waking up, I don't know how you slept through <laughs> all of that rain overnight. I'm Jamie Yukas. Thanks for joining us for KCAL News Mornings. We're also streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. Here's what a lot of us are dealing with right now now 
Yep, heavy rain and dangerous driving conditions. Stay inside if you can. Meanwhile, in the mountains, it is all about the snow and in some areas, fog as well. We're kind of getting everything today. We have team coverage this morning with reporters all across Southern California, but let's begin with Olga, who is tracking the system for us. Olga. Hi, ladies. Yes, uh, it is a mess out there on the roads, and I know we come in really early, so at least we didn't deal with all that traffic, but all of us are going to be feeling the impacts from this very powerful Pacific storm that has already brought us a lot of rain. We're talking several inches, even places like Woodland Hills, three inches of rain so far since early this morning. We're still seeing a lot of that heavy stuff out through the LA area moving into Orange County and yes, even into parts of the Inland Empire as well. So we're going to continue feeling the impacts. We're also talking some gusty winds as well as elevated surf. So I'll go through all of that throughout the morning in just a few minutes. For now, a check of the roads. Kalina Strino is tracking all that for us. Well, again, it's really been a mess out there this morning. So please, please, please take it easy as you head out on the roadways this morning. We have an update for you on the deadly crash we've been rewarding for the past couple of hours. Uh, we have learned that lanes are starting to reopen now. This is the eastbound 10 right at Kellogg Drive. All lanes were shut down for hours, but now lanes are being reopened. You can see traffic already starting to recover there. We have a look at the 5 north into uh, Paramount. That looks like it's starting to slow down as well. We have about a 40 minute commute right now, 405 southbound between the 118 and the 10 freeway. That'll take you again about 40 minutes to get through. Same deal for the 14 heading southbound as you make your way toward the 5. And we are tracking more breaking news right now. We've seen this chaos across Southern California brought by this rain. Yeah, wind. trees down just all over. Let's check in with the desk and our Chris Holmstrom. Yeah, Rudy and Jamie, the biggest damage that we are seeing are down trees. But as you mentioned, it is creating a mess across Southern California. Take a look at this video. This video was taken just a couple of hours ago. You can see a down tree in Burbank. That is a 40 foot tree that just toppled over because of the heavy saturation, obviously creating a mess in that area. Now, I want to introduce, not introduce, but bring back Mark Liu. Uh, Mark, you were talking about Old Topanga Canyon Road. There was a downed tree, down power lines. Obviously, that's leading to outages as well. Yeah, you know, when we have major rain days like this in Southern California, trees come down and they come down on power lines, and that has been causing a problem across most of Southern California. Now, I've been in touch with two of the major Southern California power agencies. First is Southern California Edison. They are reporting nine major outages affecting 2,400 customers now. Now, they said last hour was 2,300. This is their map, 2,400 customers now without power with really variable ETAs as to when they're going to get that back. The better news is coming out of LA DWP. The city of Los Angeles says they currently only have about 200 customers without power, but they said those customers can expect to have their power out for a very long time, maybe into the evening, Chris. Not something you want to wake up to, but thankfully not too cold. So, all right, Mark, thank you so much. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. You know, I was so concerned about those power outages that I took my car out of the garage and parked it on the street last night. So, Chris, thank you. It was a little adventure <laughs> the as the rain was going down. We are already seeing damage, though, caused by this latest storm. A tree came crashing down, crushed some vehicles in West Hollywood. Luckily, the owner took it all in <laughs> stride, stride, right? KCAL News' is Tina Patel is live on Lexington Avenue and Spalding Avenue with a look at the mess there, Tina. Yeah, good morning. Public Works is now here and they say they have quite a job ahead of them as they start to start to chop up this eucalyptus tree into pieces so they can get it away. Now, if you actually look, it's a very big tree that landed on two vehicles here on the street. And we were talking to one of the car owners. He said that's a eucalyptus tree. It's a very big tree, but very shallow roots. So in some ways, he's not surprised that this happened. We caught up with him a little while ago and here's what he said about what happened about an hour, hour and a half ago. We heard a loud crash. I was asleep and I knew it was my car. I literally did. I just knew it was my car. It sounded like a tree hitting at top of SUV. Okay, we're just lucky that nobody was walking their dog. I mean, the tree fell across the sidewalk. It was pretty, could have been terrible. <laughs> Yeah, the owner of that SUV taking this in stride. And actually, I was talking to 